No. <clears throat> Hello, Dr. Medina. I'm glad yeah. to see you. And I appreciate your time for this interview. It's going to be about inter, um, well, interrelational, um, the personal relationships. And well, yeah, so I would like to introduce you to the people who will be watching this video. Dr. Medina is a professor at Loma Linda University in the School of Public Health. Um, Dr. Medina, I really like and enjoy a lot pickleball. <laughs> so for those who are not familiar with pickleball, I will give a chance to Dr. Medina to give us a little bit of information about pickleball, since I know this is one of <laughs> the strongest uh, passion that Dr. Medina has in his life. So just, just talk to a little bit about that, Dr. Medina, please. Yeah, sure. Well, it's just, it's basically a, a, a game where you are hitting a plastic ball over a net and uh, with, with a paddle, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit big, it's bigger than a ping pong paddle and you're just hitting the ball back and forth over the net. So the court is the size of a badminton court. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so people think it looks like tennis. If they're watching it, it, it really is more like, they say it feels like ping pong, but you're standing on the table. So it's like ping pong on a court. That's what it really feels like a lot. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Get a lot of good exercise. Great, great. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, but yeah, I, I never played before, but I saw the the um the Pickle Court at Loma Linda University. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, in one of our classes you you were talking about how how that was uh, started here in, in at Loma Linda. So would you like to to talk a little bit more about how this pickleball um, started at Loma Linda? I know that you're one of those that basically were working with the foundation of it. Can you talk a little <laughs> bit about that? Sure, sure. Well, um, I learned pickleball from my mom that lives in Michigan. So mm -hmm. when I came back here to California, to Loma Linda, I couldn't find pickleball anywhere in, in the Loma Linda area or nearby. So I just purchased a, a net. You can buy these nets that you could set up anywhere. You could set up a net in the street, on the driveway, in the uh -huh. gym, in a parking lot. So they have these nets that they can, they can stand up by themselves. So I bought one of those nets and I set it up in a tennis court here in Loma Linda. Mm -hmm. And this was back in 2016. And I invited some friends over and we started playing. And there was about nine of us back then that played. But then from that point on, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. We kept inviting more people. They would invite more people. And pretty soon we had to move to the, the university, Loma Linda University, at the Wellness Center there, the Drayson Center. Mm -hmm. and we did it there, and it kept growing and growing and growing. And so eventually other cities around Loma Linda, they, they, the people that were playing with us, say, hey, let's maybe we can start this in Redlands or maybe we can start this in Yucaipa or Grand Terrace. So I would help them get started in those other cities. So it started with nine of us. And then now there's probably here in this area around Loma Linda and the cities around Loma Linda, Riverside, Moreno Valley, Grand Terrace, San Bernardino, Highland, Yucaipa and Redlands, that sort of ring of cities around Loma Linda, probably over a thousand people or more that play pickleball now. So they all have clubs. They're very active. They, you know, they're, um, yeah, there's people playing at our, at our university. We have a lot of students that play now. And uh, so, yes, it's, it's, it's grown exponentially in the last, you know, six, seven years. So it's great to see so many people physically active mm -hmm. uh, in a fun and social way. It's a very social game because you're very close to each other when you're playing. And so you can, you can fit four pickleball courts on one tennis court. So there, there could be, you play doubles. So that, that's like four people per court. So that you could have like 16 people on the size of one tennis court playing. And uh, yeah, it can get, uh, it, yeah, it's very social. So. Amazing. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for bringing us up the, the social side of the uh, pickleball game. Because when we talk about interpersonal relationship, so basically it has to be with um, have a good social relationship between two people or more, correct? So um, so Picaboy seems like one of those ways that people can have more better relationship with others. So how they develop their interpersonal relationship 
and coming from the intra-personal. Intra is just when you just talk to yourself and intra is when you relate to other people. So mm -hmm. it seems like uh, the interrelationship uh, um, in Pickleball, it, it works for having a better relationship with others. So now I know that you're in the public health department, Loma Linda. So how do you relate Pickleball and interpersonal relationship, but in community? So from the standpoint of making man whole, that's Loma Linda motto. So can you talk to me? How do you visualize that? Sure, yeah. Well, you know, it's a great way to, hang on a second. My wife is in the kitchen, so um, I don't know if that, the sound is picking up. So, um, so what? Um, so how we use it is that you can use it to to get to know people, like in, in some churches. Mm -hmm. We have churches who will who who will do, you know, Saturday night uh, activities, and they will um, invite the community to come mm -hmm. and play. And so it's a fun game. It's very easy to pick up. I, I usually teach somebody in less than an hour, they can, they can be playing the game. And so it's a great way to outreach to people. And, and, and I've met so many people, so many friends through pickleball. And, and I do play tournaments. Not, not most, most people don't play tournaments, but I play tournaments. So I, tr I go to different places. And I, so I, I have friends now literally all over the world that play pickleball. And so it's a great, way to get to get a lot of people together but also intergenerational you know we my mom is 80 my mom just turned my mom is actually turning 84 today so wow. she's 84 years old today's her oh, birthday really? okay. and uh, you know i so it's something i can play you know with my mom mm -hmm. and we can play other people of different ages i teach kids as young as nine ten years old so you could have different generations playing in fact one of the top women's pro teams in the world one of the top women's doubles team is a mother-daughter duo the mom is like 40 something the daughter is only 15 years old but yet they're one of the top women pro teams in the world so so yeah so it's it's intergenerational inner you know it's a great way to meet a lot of different people and like i said it's very very social Amazing. But yeah, wow. I, I mean, I, I was a familiar a little bit. So, well, that people really enjoyed the social aspect of, of pick a ball, but I didn't visualize that, that relationship between different ages. So I know that your mom um, recently competed in nationally yes. and she competed by her age, uh, something like that. Yeah. So, but in that case, I didn't know that people like, let's say, an adult, 40 and above or 30s and a child 10 years old, they can play in the mm -hmm. same spot, in the same area. And regardless of their age, they still have that interpersonal, interpersonal relationship and developing this as social aspect. Yes. There's a lot of, I know a lot of people like father and sons will play here in the area. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, people like that. So... Um, yeah, because again, it's it's it, it's not just based on power alone. I mean, power is nice, but it's really more about control and mm -hmm. and finesse. And so, um, so that's why a little kid can play with an adult and still do you know still do very well. So yeah. But yeah, this is good because as you mentioned, power. So we know that by um, um, exercise physiology, so power is strength plus speed. So meaning if you're doing any exercise and you want to have power on the sport on exercise, so you need to have strength and, uh, and also need to be fast, so speed. So, but in this case, pickleball, it seems like more like doable in, in the case, regardless if you are fast or not fast and, and if we have too much strength or less strength. So it's still being doable, working that's, out. Yeah, that's because that's the nature of the, the, the sport because it's, it's a plastic ball. Mm. and so like a wiffle ball you know most people know what a wiffle ball is so mm -hmm. that only goes so fast but you can hit it slowly and the ball can go slowly whereas like with tennis you know even if you hit the ball slow you know you hit it gently the tennis ball moves very quickly and so it's the learning curve in tennis is much steeper than it is in pickleball so if i want to just play really easy with other seniors like on wednesday we were doing a filming for a blue zone 
documentary movie from the, you know, the UK, from Britain, and I was playing with all these 70, 80-year-old people, I could just hit the ball nice and gentle, and the ball goes slowly, and, and it's okay. But then, on, then later that evening, we were playing intramurals, and we're playing with like students, and they, they can hit the ball very fast. So the game can go like, you know, it can go from slow, hitting very slowly, and then all of a sudden, bang, 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 you know, like really fast. Just, you know, and so it can change really quickly. So but the nice thing is you can change your level based on who you're playing. Great. Well, yeah, that, that's good. So that then give the chance to give, uh, that everyone who would like to join and have more social aspects um, and, and then at the same time have some exercise so they can go with the pickleball sport instead of just trying another one, like let's say basketball or volleyball mm -hmm. that are a little bit more impact or more, well, you need to, to be fast and have more power for those than versus pickleball. Right. But yeah, so I have a question here. So I know in the personal relationship, uh, we can develop in different ways just only through pickable. So let's just see in a little bit more deep, let's just say interpersonal relationship in a marriage. So I know that you have a family, have a dog, a wife and kids. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know all your kids, but I remember that you mentioned they have yeah. some, uh, I think that they are already adolescents or school. Oh, there, yeah, she's an adult. Our, our daughter is, yes. is 20, yeah, she's in her mid-20s. So, so now, how, based on your experience, uh, I would like, if you would like to share with us, so if, if, it's, if it's not fun, if it's not, it's okay. So how can we develop a healthy interpersonal relationship in, in, a, in the family context? So meaning between husband or wife or, or with kids, so because we, we, not, we need to decide to be socially developed outside. So also needs to be in our house. So, and I know that I asked this question because in class I saw that, well, you always talk about your family positively. So and I wanted to, to <laughs> see how, what advices you, you have for, for us. So. Advice, oh man. <laughs> or something. So how we can have this interpersonal relationship in the home. So basically, uh -huh. what is it? yeah. All right. Well, you know, when um, when our daughter was small, it was it was a lot easier. We were always involved in a lot of her activities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like when she was uh, we, so we homeschooled our daughter. Mm -hmm. And so we were very, you know, my wife was doing the homeschooling and then uh, she would do like ballet or swimming. She was on the ballet, uh, ballet school and swim team. And so then we would take turns, uh, you know, you know bringing her there or watching her there so we were very involved with her life um you know at that and so we just did everything everything together you know go I was a coach we were coaches on the the team so just you know just uh being involved it wasn't like I just go to work and then they just do their own thing and uh so we were we were pretty involved with her as she was growing up now now she's an adult herself so now everybody seems to be busy with their own thing she has her own job uh, and all this, and, and then my wife teaches here, and I teach here. So we're we're here together usually in the evening times, but we're pretty much we're pretty busy working. So everybody's working now. But when she was smaller, we um, we were involved in church together. So we did a lot of activities together in church. We were the adventurer uh, directors, my wife and I. So we were involved in a lot of those activities in church. So our daughter, you know, it, it sort of involved about her different things, whether it was school or church. We were all pretty active in those areas. Thank you for saying that. But yeah, it seems like uh, the foundation of growing with mom and dad and having this connection between both, even if you were working outside and, and your wife was dedicating homeschooling to her, so you still have some interpersonal relationship with your daughter and, and wife. So you know, spend time at church and spending time going to um, the places that she used to practice for sport. So it seems like uh, it just dedicate time to family. It's part of the keywords to have a healthy interpersonal relationship as people will have kids and then the kids grow up, but they still have that foundation that, that was developed by mom and dad together. Yeah, we were, we were, we were pretty much into physical activity. Um, my wife and I were are both into that. And so when summer, our daughter Summer was born, I remember on on four days after she was born, 
we were out in the hills here in Loma Linda hiking. You know, she was, you know, she was really small, so I was carrying her in a pouch. Uh, but we were out hiking on day four, and uh, we had a bike trailer. We were into we we're into mountain biking, so mm -hmm. we had a bike a bike trailer that we put put her in her whole car seat in the bike trailer, so that she could be with us. Uh, you know, biking from a very early age. And then as she got older, she had her own bike. So the three of us would bike. And then we also did things with other friends who also had had uh, kids similar age. So we, we did a lot of physical. Uh, so it seemed like a lot of things that we did were on physical activity. So whether it was running, we had a jogging, uh, you know, a stroller that was a jogger stroller. Mm -hmm. So we'd either go running with summer or bicycling, mountain biking. I, I like mountain biking because I don't like to deal with cars. Cars would mm -hmm. sort of scare me. So I didn't want to be pulling a trailer on my bicycle on the street because I was afraid, you know, accidents happen, right? Yes. But out in the hills, in the, in the dirt road there, on the dirt trails, it was just, there were no cars. So we, we yes. did all mountain biking. You know, we were, we were in the mountain biking. And this, the trails are like a quarter of a mile from here. So it's very close. So we could just bike from the house to the trails. So... Yeah, a lot of our friends did the same thing. So we all we always did it with groups of friends too. But yeah, it seems like uh, um, you you you're building a relationship or you build a relationship and also your families through sports uh, or any physical activity or physical hiking activity, yeah. up to the mountains. Yeah, so physical activity is a common ground to build relationship uh, with other people. So starting from the house to the external environment, people surrounding us. But yeah, that, that's good. So now, uh, since we're getting closer to the time, we're like, since I am also in the School of Public Health, and I know mm -hmm. that you are a health coach, and <laughs> I'm a health coach, well, God willing, graduating soon. Uh -huh. um, so I will be relating with uh, having a relation, a lot of relationship with people, you know, as a coach or as an educator, as a medical doctor. So which advices can you give to me that I can build healthy interpersonal relationship from the professional aspects of my career so what yeah um you know as you know when we talk in health coaching one of the key skill sets is um, active listening so mm -hmm. because a lot of times when we have a lot of education we tend to assume we know what the patient or client needs Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we tend to diagnose and then we want to give a prescription or, or a solution like, well, here's your exercise plan or here's your diet plan or here's your stress management plan. And so, uh, but, and, and I'm not saying that that's bad necessarily, but, but instead of just jumping into, into that, we, I, you know, we need to listen more and then really see what's going on with the patient. And then we can offer some suggestions or guidance or, or help them figure out what is best for them. And so I think, um, you know, listening more and, and talking less sometimes. And, and I had to learn that when I was, when I graduated uh, back in 93 and I was working with patients trying to lose weight, trying to quit smoking, trying to, um, you know, uh, manage their stress better, whatever. You know, I always was quick to like, oh, hey, well, here's 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 the the plan, here's a solution for you. But then, as I as I got further along, I realized that you know what, I need to li really listen more and hear where the patient is coming from. And then, and sometimes when I and and sometimes they would tell me something that I'd be like, oh, my my mind was totally different than what I had originally thought. Mm -hmm. And so it changes my mind, or it, it made me think of a different approach. So I think, you know, to answer your question, I think, um, you know, just not jumping to conclusions. I mean, it's very easy for us to be judgmental mm -hmm. as, as health experts, because we'll look at somebody and say, oh, you know, they, they're lazy. They don't have willpower. They're just eating all this junk food. And now, now they've gained all this weight. Well, if they just, you know, get off their, their couches and start exercising and eat better, they, they would have no problem. Well, you know, it's more to it than that. That's the surface. That might be the surface behaviors, but really we have to find out, well, what's driving that behavior? Why are they not, you know, wanting to be active? Why are they eating all this junk food? You know, and so, um, you know, why are they smoking? You know, it's just not like, oh, you know, they just like to smoke. Some people do, but most people smoke for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. So once you can figure out what that reason is and, and then help them to see, hey, I can, I can deal with that need 
in a healthy way and not depend on smoking, then mm -hmm. you can really help them quit smoking versus, okay, we're going to just give you this medication or we're going to give you this quit smoking plan and you're just going to have to use willpower and you're just going to quit uh, without dealing the, the underlying causes, mm -hmm. then you're, it's going to be a recipe for long-term failure because they may quit now, but then maybe a month later down the road, something happens to them, some stressful thing, and they'll be back to smoking right away because we didn't really teach them how to deal with the underlying causes. We just dealt with the surface behavior, which is the smoking. So that's what I would, I would recommend to people. If, if anybody that's listening is in going into or working with patients or people trying to change the lifestyle behaviors, um, you, we really need to listen more and not judge. And then, you know, work with the client versus saying, Hey, I, I, you know, I'm the expert. I'll, I'll tell you what you need to do to mm -hmm. get rid of that behavior or overcome it. It's, it's, there's usually more to it than that. Thank you for sharing that. Well, yeah, so that's amazing. So it, uh, it seems like uh, the key word here is active listening, be not judgmental, and just listen to the patient or client. So, mm -hmm. and be, be in their shoes and not just be in the expert shoes. So give them the power to, you are in control and I am here to guide you mm -hmm. and to understand what, what you're going through because I'm not the smoker, you are the smoker, but we should approach them as if we are feeling that we are being the smoker, but guiding them to, to take the decision, support them in, 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 the, well, in those time of challenges that they, yeah. that they have because they're breaking with the addiction or something. It's smoking in the case of smoking. Well, it's really about building relationship. So if you can show like you're saying, Mm -hmm. going in their shoes and you're showing, you know, you, they sense that you are empathetic mm -hmm. with their situation, with their, with their, who they are, then you can build rapport. You can build a relationship. Once you can do that, then, then you build trust. So if, if they, tr and then when they trust you, then they're more willing to listen to you. They're more willing to to, uh, you know, come up with ideas. And, and if you can, if, you know, at that point, then if you make suggestions, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's really about building a relationship and building that rapport. And if you can do that with somebody, then your chances of changing, helping them change their behaviors is going to be much higher. And mm -hmm. if I'm just this sort of expert telling you, and we don't really have a relationship, but I'm just giving you information, that doesn't change the lifestyle behaviors for long term. Great. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And but yeah, so I'm I'm working for that. And <laughs> anything else that you would like to share before I do a summer and close up with the uh, interview? No, I, I think um yeah, I would just say, you know, going back to pickleball, I think that everybody, you know, I'm an ambassador for mm -hmm. for Loma Linda for pickleball for the USA pickleball. Um USA pickleball, which is the governing national governing body here in the US. Wow. And so uh, I'm an ambassador to them. I actually also serve on the board of directors for the USA Pickleball Association. So it's a nonprofit. It, you know, it's, it's like USA Swimming, USA Gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the mission is to, to grow the sport in the U.S. And, uh, and so, and I, but I, you know, I do it not just because it's a fun sport, but because I've seen it as a great tool for increasing physical activity, which is mm -hmm. a special interest of mine. I mean, I wish I had known about pickleball when I was working at Beaver Medical Group before coming back to Loma Linda, mm -hmm. uh, because we had a big parking lot there. I could have easily set up a court right in the parking lot. Uh, and so uh, I look at it as a public health intervention mm -hmm. to, to easily get people moving in a fun way, in a social way. And it's moderate intensity for most people. So, it, you know, it's easy. It doesn't like, you know, mountain biking is a very challenging sport because the moment you go off the, the pavement to the dirt, it's sand, it's rocks, it's uphill, down, you know, whatever. It's for mm -hmm. most people, mountain biking is a very high intensity sport. So it's, it, it's very painful for a lot of people. Um, and it, they give up and they get discouraged, but pickleball is a lower intensity. So um, I wish I had known about it back then or else I would have had all my patients playing it. So I, I, I encourage people to, to give it a try. You can mm -hmm. almost, it's growing all over the, the world. So they can find, if you go to usapickleball.org, there's a, one of the, there's a tab there that talks about how to locate where pickleball is near you. And so you could find 
the closest club, the closest ambassador, and find out where's where's pickleball. The, the the documentary we were shooting yesterday was from the UK, right? So mm-hmm. the guy, the host, John Snow, who is a a famous news reporter in in England, he just recently retired and is doing this documentary. But it was his first time to ever play pickleball. Oh so wow. He, he just enjoyed it. He loved it. And so he says, oh, man, I'm going to, when I go back to England, I'm going to find pickleball there. So I emailed him some contacts there. I have there in, in the UK. I emailed him and, and they, I shared, I connected them together. So when he goes back home, he can uh, play, you know, find it there in England. So, yeah, it, it's fun. I, I encourage everybody to try it. Great. Well, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I hope to be next time before I... I Got you. Hello, Marlinda. That's I will right. talk to you later after we are not the, 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 the interview to see okay. how we can get the hands on it. But yeah, so for those who will watch this uh, in the future, and today we talk about interpersonal relationship. And there are several ways to do it. So one of those is the social aspect through people around us. We use, for example, pickleball as a as a good tool. Besides to do a exercise or physical activity in a fun way, outdoor, or you can also do it indoor. So the mm-hmm. majority of courts are outdoor uh, around where we live, uh, Loma Linda area. And but yeah, the fun part is that it is very flexible. So any person that is willing to do it will do it. And you can play kids and parents or older people with younger people and mm-hmm. develop this interpersonal relationship and more the social aspect, which is one of the uh, needs that we all as human beings have, so which is being social beings. So then uh, on the side of how we can have a healthy interpersonal relationship in the home, so with the spouses, so it is important to balance between uh, work and relationship, spouse and kids. And this through activity, in this case, Dr. Medina told us that was uh, going to church, adventures or going physical activity and being active. So as a, as a coach, And so uh, we can see that then they develop that relationship. So then the other aspect is me as a health professional, I asked Dr. Medina, so how can I have a healthy interpersonal relationship in my career as a coach or medical doctor? And well, medical doctor is usually classified as expert, meaning you give instruction and the patient does. So, but the health coach is different because we, we need to listen I mean, doctors also listen, but give more instructions. So, but the health coach is it, it's particularly important because we listen and read between lines to see what the patient is saying. And we we work from there um, that patients can have some lifestyle that lasts. So this is the goal. And usually all these work in team, medical doctors or, or coaches. So for but for the lifestyle change, so they refer to, to coaches in this case. Mm-hmm. Uh, to have more active listening because you can dedicate more time. So this is mostly that we talk today, uh, how to develop the personal relationship in the house, uh, outside, and also in the professional aspect as health, as health professionals. So with that said, thank you so much, Dr. Medina, for your time. And sure. I hope to see you soon. And I will stop the okay. recording. God bless. Okay, thank you. Thank you, You're welcome. My pleasure.